Thank you so much. So actually, this was a this is a big presentation, but I've made it smaller and smaller <laughs> as the day has gone along. And so I want some enthusiastic people to call out some answers to these things. And so this is not, it's not a quiz, but it's just nice cases, and I think they've got good educational points. So let's start off looking at a 52-year-old male with a history of pancreatic cancer. And he's had a recent PET scan, which is negative. And so PET scan, I'm sure many of you know, PET scan is really regarded as just the most valuable and indicative test. And it's often done so often for things that we see in the other order. But this patient has already had the PET scan, and it's negative. However, the patient comes for his next surveillance CT scan. And so as you know, many times patients that have had cancer have um, scans performed in the portal venous phase. And then they show low attenuation masses in the liver. And these are indeterminate. And so they, of course, are very critical because it modifies the patient's treatment. And so I'm sure many of you are familiar. So we do literally scan after scan after scan after scan every day for resolution of these lesions that are small. This one's bigger than many, but that are small. And can we confirm that they are cystic lesions or are they solid lesions that require further evaluation? Are, is that a fair assessment? So um, on this um, CT scan in the portal venous phase, there were several very tiny low attenuation areas, but then there was this area which was not quite as dark as most cystic lesions, and so it was sent to us in this patient that's PET negative. So here's our ultrasound scan. So I marked two things on the ultrasound scan. So what am I showing? A cyst. Yeah, a cyst, but it's got kind of like a solid halo around it, right? And so we, if it only had the black part that's marked by the asterisk, we would just say, that's a simple cyst, forget it. Don't do anything more, pet negative, there's nothing. But in this case where we see that cyst, and then we can nicely see that solid area. So of course, in my department, what do we do? <laughs> Contrast enhanced ultrasound. So when we inject the microbubbles, so what are we going to say? So is that... We can see the cyst is completely avascular, but what about the solid component? It's enhancing, right? So it's heterogeneously enhancing. So there's no question that that's of concern. So now, as we look at the images that we get, so there's our image at 30 seconds. We can see the completely black avascular component, and we can see the heterogeneous enhancement of that thick rim. And at one minute, what's happening? It's washing out. And at four minutes, it's washed out completely. So what are we going to say? Are we worried about this or are we not worried? We're worried, right? And so we say this is an abnormal appearance that we're concerned. And so how often do we show cystic metastases? We don't show them very often, but we show them regularly. And so the most common cancer that we show with cystic metastases is renal cell carcinoma. But renal cell carcinoma, pancreatic carcinoma is here, ovarian cancer, there are many that can do it. Even colon cancer can have a cystic morphology. And so this is a biopsy proven, so complex cystic mass, arterial phase enhancement with rapid marked washout. So even though we've been talking about LIRADS, this is not a patient that has anything wrong with his. He does not have chronic liver disease. But the things that we learn from, um, or that we've now implemented into LIRADS, they apply to all liver masses. And so the things that we find out about washout and that kind of thing, they're applicable really everywhere. So what do we think? This is not going to be HCC for sure, but what are, is it going to be? This is a proven cystic pancreatic metastasis. So what about this one? A 71-year-old female with a history of HBV cirrhosis, and so now she has, um, um, she's having secondary surveillance. So when she comes, we find two masses in her liver. So there's a mass in her liver. So let's look at her contrast-enhanced ultrasound performed in the long axis, which was shown by my other investigators, because then when she breathes, it stays in our, our field of view. It doesn't go in and out. So we, is the lesion got, what has it got? 
uh, arterial phase hyper enhancement, absolutely. So at 15 seconds hyper enhanced, that one minute ISO, at three minutes, weak washout. So what is this? An HCC. And so lesion two, so certainly we can do more than one lesion with CUS very easily. And I think a most important thing, because if you read critical analysis of, of CUS, the complaints are that it's operator dependent, that it's subjective, and that it's limited in its scope, only able to evaluate one nodule at a time instead of the whole liver. We can evaluate many more than one lesion. So here's a deep, smaller lesion, and when we do the contrast ultrasound on this, what do we say about this one? Hyper-enhancing, right? So there's our nodule right there, and there's its hyper-enhancement. So beautifully shown, even though it's a fairly deep nodule. So again, 22 seconds, it's hyper-enhancing. One minute, it's ISO, and at four minutes, it's got weak washout. So what is this? Another HCC. So very nicely shown, both of those lesions are treated with radiofrequency or microwave ablation in a patient who's already had treatment for another cancer. So slow progressive washout, hepatocellular malignancy, recurrent HCCs. And of course, statistically, in any patient who's had an HCC, any nodule that they get, regardless of what it does, is likely to be an HCC. So what about this one? This is a very nice case. An asymptomatic 68-year-old female, and she's got elevated liver function tests. And so she's got a very funny-looking mass in her liver. Like this is, whoops, this is her, her kidney here, and it looks like this is another kidney there, but it's not. It's a liver mass. So there's her liver mass, and so now it's a big liver mass. It's echogenic, and it's got kind of like a hypoechoic halo. So what happens when we inject this liver mass? So this is a fairly long clip. So is it hyper-enhancing? Definitely hyper-enhancing. So we're at 18 seconds now, and we're just continuing to watch her. And so what's happening as we're continuing to watch? Yeah, it's washing out. And so this is probably, in my department, not a first injection. It's likely a second. And so we're doing a longer clip to show the wash in and the wash out in a continuous clip. And so we can see exactly that, a hyper-enhancing mass that washes out very early. So at 18 seconds, it's hyper-enhanced. At one minute, it definitely has washout. And at two minutes, it's got quite marked washout. So what, do, what are we going to say to our clinicians? Do we think this is HCC? It might be, but we don't think that. So we more likely think, because of that rapid washout, that it'll be a non-hepatocellular malignancy. So even though this is a, even though this is not a risk patient, we're still going to say that there's APHE with rapid washout. So we're thinking a non-hepatocellular malignancy. So that includes everything from cholangiocarcinoma, metastatic disease, lymphoma, all of those tumors. And so this lady has a biopsy because there's no other way to get this answer. Doing more imaging isn't going to give the answer. And so this is a big peripheral cholangiocarcinoma that was treated surgically. So what about this 78-year-old female with epigastric pain and tenderness? And so what does she have? So here's her kind of normal liver parenchyma in SAG in the left lobe. And she's got this big mass. And here it is in axial view. So what does that look like? You are ultrasound experts. What would you think that might be? A cyst. Perfect. You said exactly what I want you to say. So there is a rule that goes with this. So whenever anything looks like it might be a cyst, always consider that it might be a solid tumor without any matrix. And so tumors that don't have any matrix are tumors that have a monocellular histology. So in other words, the whole tumor is homogeneous, one cell bank after the next, and no, no connective tissue matrix. And so let me show you this. We do the contrast on this. That looks like a cyst. I totally agree with you. And does it enhance? You betcha. It's really enhancing. So in the arterial phase, it's enhancing like crazy. And then when we look at 30 seconds, so there's our enhanced mass right there. 
and there's our mass at 30 seconds washed out and still showing washout with a slight difference in the technique at 1.5 minutes. So this one is very similar to the former one in terms of what finally happens. So APHC with rapid marked washout, so we think non-hepatocellular malignancy, you've got to biopsy. And what is this? Large B-cell lymphoma in the liver. So liver um, or solid organ lymphoma is not as common as lymphadenopathic. In other words, most people present within large lymph nodes in their abdomen, in their chest, axilla, and groin. But occasionally, not occasionally, but regularly, we see them that come in the liver or in the spleen, and this is one such as that. So what about this? A 45-year-old male, Philippine origin, incidentally detected mass on outside ultrasound, and he has no medical history. And so in the line of racial profiling, because he's Filipino, I ask him at least 10 times if he has knowledge that he's been checked for hepatitis B. And he does have knowledge, very smart man, and he said, I do not have hepatitis B for sure. So this is what we see. So on the grayscale ultrasound, and this is an incidental mass. So you can see he's got a mass big like your head, great big enormous echogenic mass with a black area in the center, and he's got normal liver, and on elastography his liver does not have cirrhosis. So let's look at his scan. So what do we see on this scan? So this is a very, very good scan for me to show you, because even to this day, I think it's very difficult to figure out what we should where we should put this. So first of all, do, do we have arterial phase hyperenhancement? Yes, yeah, so definitely, it just enhances like crazy. But so the question is, do you think it's a diffuse pattern with a necrotic center? Or do you think it's a rim pattern with a really big fat rim? <laughs> and it's quite difficult to tell which of those it is for sure. But regardless, there's arterial phase hyperenhancement Definitely in my mind, I think that maybe could still be a rim in spite of how big it is. But what do we see? At one minute, it's gone. So at one minute, it's gone. And at three, it's absolutely black. And so this, again, I'm showing you a whole sequence just to show you the difference in what happens. We know that it's hyper-enhancing, washes out so fast. So this is malignancy. And so the most important thing you want to make sure that you tell your clinicians when you're doing these is, these are malignant enhancement patterns. And so then, if you don't get the final diagnosis right, you still got them started down the right path by saying, this is malignant, we've got to biopsy it to find out what it is. So they'll biopsy this, and what is this? This is a neuroendocrine tumor metastasis. And so this patient had that giant tumor resected, much to my absolute shock. And, and we never, ever, ever did, even with octiotride scans, we don't never identified his primary tumor. So obviously he had a primary tumor that may have regressed, but that was a neuroendocrine, a metastasis in his liver. So I've shown you now a cholangiocarcinoma, a lymphoma, and a metastasis. And in terms of what we see and how we interpret it, we're going to say a malignant enhancement pattern. The malignancy suggests non-hepatocellular malignancy, and particularly in the patient that's not at risk, you won't find a bunch of HCCs sneaking in there. These will all turn out to be other kinds of malignancy. Um, oh, this is a quite easy, just a nice example. So this is a male, history of hepatitis C and alcohol cirrhosis, and he presents with esophageal bleeding secondary to varices. So the very first scan that we see on him, what am I pointing at there with those arrows? A kind of s s sagittal oblique, what is it? Yeah, it's a rim, but what is it? Like what would you normally see on that picture? If I, if I showed you a Doppler picture, what would normally be in that location? The portal vein. So if that's the portal vein, what's wrong with it? It's huge, right? So it's big, it's full of echoes, and it's got a solid mass inside it. So grayscale ultrasound shows an expansive thrombus in the portal vein. And so the thing that's important about this is that although we generally see expansive thrombus in the portal vein in association with what? 
with HCC. So we normally see a great big tumor in the liver, and then we see the portal vein with expansive thrombus. But sometimes, this is very well described in the literature, but it's rare. Sometimes all we see is the expansive vein in the the expansive tumor in the portal vein. So the question for us as imagers, first of all, is of course, is there an HCC in the liver? But more important, is this malignant thrombus? So when we do the injection of contrast, you can see it's just absolutely beautiful. So you can see right when that contrast comes in that you can see the branching um, hyper arterialized t tumor filling that portal vein. And then when we look at four minutes, we can see that there is washout. So that's an arterialized vein with the main portal vein really three times at least the size of a normal vessel with all those vascularized branches way out into the liver and then washout. And so if we don't see the tumor in the liver, we can do biopsy studies of the portal vein alone just to confirm that it is HCC. Could it be other than HCC? Very rarely. So cholangiocarcinoma has been reported in the portal vein, as has hepatocholangiocarcinoma, and even metastases, but this is HCC. Now, um, oh, I'll just go, oh, maybe I'll show you this. This is an interesting mass. Okay, so this is a lady, and this is a mass in her liver. So is that a simple cyst? That was what was directed to us, that the patient had a cystic mass. So it's plain and simply not a simple cyst. So let's do the contrast-enhanced ultrasound, not an exemplary scan, but what's happening to those septations and solid parts inside the cyst? They're enhancing, right? So we have a cystic, multi-cystic mass with enhancing solid and cystic components. So what's this? So it enhances and then it shows, certainly it fades away, whether it actually shows real washout, it certainly goes way down. And so this kind of appearance, hyper-enhancement of the periphery and of the thick septations, very minimal washout on delayed images, but nonetheless, we're suspicious of this for a non-hepatocellular malignancy, and this is a biliary cyst adenoma, and this, of course, has got malignant potential as a biliary cyst adenocarcinoma. Now, this is a beautiful scan with a gorgeous lesson. Here's a, a patient, 47 years old, with abdominal pain, no risk factors. So we see a big mass in her liver. So when we do the contrast-enhanced ultrasound on this, so it's interesting, right? So it's got a really unusual thick rim around the outside and a big band down the center. And so what are we going to call that? For sure we're going to call it arterial phase hyper-enhancement. But what pattern will we pick? It's not like any of our benign tumors. So this is not a hidden hemangioma or a hidden FNH. So she's got that very, very wild enhancement pattern. And then what happens at one minute? Again, it's completely washed out. Now, I want to show you a couple more clips. So this picture on the right-hand side is telltale. So first of all, when we do a portal venous phase sweep on her, we didn't see all of these other lesions, but you can see that her liver is filled with tumors. So she's got a big tumor plus a liver filled with smaller tumors. So she's got malignant tumor and metastatic disease. And so this is a picture of the tumor um, in the portal venous phase. And so what are we seeing within that tumor? Sorry? Yeah, the hepatic veins. And so the, that's the hepatic veins. And so what about the hepatic veins? How do they look? Well, they might look a bit big, but they look pretty nice, don't they? Like, in other words, most of the time when I've shown you tumors, you don't see the normal vasculature going through. And there's only two tumors that leave. This is a, a very rare observation, but it's such an important one. So there's only two tumors that will leave the vessels, like, passing unaltered through the tumor. So in other words, this isn't the tumor that, this is the blood supply that's supplying the, the tumor. This is just vessels that are there. So that's their territory, and they just keep going through. And so what are those two tumors? They're lymphoma and cholangiocarcinoma. And so rapid or peripheral arterial phase hyperenhancement 
rapid marked washout again, non-hepatocellular cellular malignancy, those hepatic veins in the center, and this turns out to be a cholangiocarcinoma. I think we should go home. <laughs> so any questions or any comments from anyone? I'm really grateful if you can all fill out your evaluations. Please take some of the reprints that we made of a couple of articles, and please make any suggestions that you want for further ICAS educational courses on the back. I, I apologize for my evaluation form. It was made in haste because I forgot my form at home. But, um, but I, I think that um, you're a great audience, and I thank you all for your attention.